All right, turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 15, 32. <clears throat> this is going to be a tough message, and uh, a lot of people don't take this very well, and uh, I've, I've known a lot of people that have had trouble with this, working, and um, but this is a skill that everybody needs in life uh, to be successful and in, in the main goal in life to glorify the Lord. And uh, this message is uh, instruction on receiving instructions and correction. And uh, in Proverbs 15, 32, it says, He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The way you receive instruction, it says a lot about you. It says a lot about where your heart is. And <clears throat> for a lot of people, it's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, when I took Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for a while, there was two types of guys, new guys that would come in. And... <clears throat> One type, they would, uh, they would get in there and start rolling around and they'd realize they don't know what they're doing. They kind of get dominated. And the first things they'd say would be, how did you do that? Uh, how can I stop you from doing that? And then there'd be another type of guy that would, that would just kind of get quiet and he'd just want to get out of there as quick as possible and never come back. He didn't want instruction. He didn't want to learn. And uh, there's three different ways that we can respond to correction. And the first way <clears throat> is to submit to it. In Proverbs 8.33, it says, Hear instruction and be wise, and refuse it not. The Bible here is ordering us to, hear, to listen to good instruction and become wise. And don't refuse instruction when it's given to you. In Proverbs 6.23, it says, The commandment is a lamp, and the law, <clears throat> and the law is light, and reproof and instruction are the way of life. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. How many times do we go witnessing and we try and give people instructions out of the Word of, out of, the word of God and show them the way of life and they refuse it? And <clears throat> the saved people here, we've submitted to the Lord and believing the gospel. But... <clears throat> What is the wrong way to deal with instruction? The second way uh, is the wrong way. It's rebellion. Uh, when, when Cain uh, gave his sacrifice and God corrected him and said, you know, this is the right way to do it, he rebelled and he killed his own brother. And <clears throat> everybody has the choice to rebel. And I want to deal with one of the biggest reasons why people rebel against the Lord and re rebel against just good instruction at work, at home, uh, children. Uh, in Proverbs 13.10, it says, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the, with the well-advised is wisdom. Listen, pride, it's like a cancer deep down inside of us. Yeah, there, there's even secret rebellion. Whenever, whenever you're given instruction, good instruction, that you know you should have followed, and maybe you do on the outside, but you feel it deep down inside. You feel this, this little rebellious feeling. That's caused by pride. And <clears throat> I'd like to give a good definition of pride. It's uh, an overestimation of oneself. When it, the way you want to deal with pride is <clears throat> you want to look to God's word and you want to think of yourself soberly. Because if you're trying to over, uh, usurp authority from your, from, from your authority and not receive the instructions, <clears throat> it's because you're not thinking of yourself soberly. In Romans 12, uh, 12 3, it says, For I say... Through the, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according, to God hath, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Think soberly of yourself, and it will knock you down a couple notches on the pride. And uh, it'll make it easier to accept any correction or instructions that you receive. A great example of this is in 1 Chronicles uh, 32:26. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. Now, <clears throat> the third way, the third tool I'd like to give you about dealing with instruction is make an appeal. How to make a proper appeal, a good appeal to your authority whenever you receive some instruction. And uh, the first thing is you have to submit. You can't do the rebellion. Uh, excuses, don't use excuses as rebellion. Don't use uh, 
the, the ability to make an appeal is your excuse. And um, so first you have to submit. You have to be in, in doing the right things first. And uh, don't make your appeal out of self-interest, just to be lazy or to uh, pre appease your pride. <clears throat> first, you need, to, uh, you need to have your motives right. When you make an appeal to your authority, whenever you receive some instruction that, that you might not agree with, you need to make sure that it's, you're making the appeal because you want to glorify the Lord. And that should be all of our goals yeah. throughout all of life. And <clears throat> you want to align your, uh, you want to try to take your authority and whatever their goal is, and you want to align that with glorifying God. Uh, and whenever you make your appeal, you want to be ready in case uh, your authority decides to, to not submit to your appeal, to, to just go ahead and submit and do the godly thing anyway. And uh, a great example here is in Daniel 1, 8, it says, uh, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So there you go. He requested it because he didn't want to defile himself. He wanted to honor God with this appeal he made to him. In Daniel uh, 1.12, it says, <clears throat> prove, prove thy servant, I beseech thee, ten days, uh, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee and, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servant. So he aligns, he wants to glorify God with his actions, and he aligns it with the goal of the king of the, uh, the prince of the eunuchs. He, uh, he tells him, if you just let me do what God tells me to do, we'll look better than everybody else. We'll, we'll just be fine. So I hope that these, uh, that everybody will remember these tools whenever they get, receive instruction to submit to it. And if you need to make an appeal, make an appeal. And I, I pray that you would uh, use these tools uh, whenever you're corrected and just uh, to glorify the Lord because that's our main goal. So, Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would uh, just bless, bless the next preacher and uh, 